Welcome to Lost in Criterion, the show where I, the Adam Glass, and my good friend... John Patrick Dorgan. John Patrick Dorgan, out there in Japan. Talk about the Criterion Collection. I'm in Ohio, by the way. I guess I always introduce you in Japan as if it's if I it's this magical world away from where I am. Yeah, I Don't sound most very people Ohio. in America live in Ohio? <laughs> Probably. Um, anyway, so this week we're talking about uh, Francois Truffaut. Truffaut, 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 Truffaut. Francois Truffaut. Truffaut. No, it's there's no L. It's not. Uh, I, I, yeah, hey, you know. Truffaut's 1959. I don't, I don't speak the French. 1959 film, The 400 Blows, um, which uh, is the American translation, which should be apparently Wild Oats if we were doing... <laughs> Sometimes it get translated Wild Oats. I guess the literal translation is just to raise hell. Um, another con- another uh, sort of autobiographical uh, to Truffaut and his friends, from what I've read. Seems much um, more um, on-the-spot uh, autobiographical, though. Much less than, absurd. Than then last week's uh, Alma Cord. Yeah. Well, yeah, of also course. I to mention what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, certainly true. This one's grittier, realer, more raw. Um, <laughs> okay. So, on that but, topic. Um, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Well, one thing One thing I want to see. Want to say here. Akira Kurosawa actually called this movie one of the most beautiful films he's ever seen, um, which I thought was great. Um, yeah. And some background material... Uh, I, I'm not quite sure I really agree with Kurosawa here. It was a beautiful film. I don't know if I'll, I'll, I'll go all the way and say it, most beautiful film, but one of. We'll, we'll go with it. Uh, but but just to note, this really kicked off the French New Wave, um, which is a period in film in France that uh, you know, more realism, uh, kind of, they, they broke from classic movie conventions, um, but really got a little more into America's cinematic style and also um, sort of neorealism is what they called it. Um, this was actually kicked off, and Truffaut says this himself, by an American, though, named Morris Engel, um, who had a movie called The Little Fugitive. He had a few. I've seen The Little Fugitive. And for some reason, it's not part of the Criterion Collection. And I discovered that. Um, and really? I was not at all? Out of not all 600, at all. Not like, like, I searched Morris Engel. Well, uh, but I, I, maybe their idea is, I, who knows, not to get into the motivation yeah. of the Criterion Collection too deeply, but possibly the idea is maybe to pick the film that most epitomizes a movement rather than yeah. the film yeah. that started a movement. Maybe, I could maybe. definitely say really, that this is really spot on for that. Yeah. This started the French New Wave, but, but Truffaut, like I said, Truffaut himself credits Engel with starting the style. Um, and The Little Fugitive... A little different than this in this, and we get into this in one scene with uh, with the puppet show. But one of Ingle's major major things, it, they're a little more raw, in a sort of not not like a real way, but an under undercooked way. Ingle's films, uh, because he uses fresh faces. He uses there's n- wait, people without acting experience, and he shoots in New York. He shoots on Coney Island. The Little Fugitive takes place on Coney Island, and it's like he didn't even get permits. <laughs> um, it's literally Coney Island's just happening in the background. Uh, people are walking by, people clearly not involved with the film are on the set of the film. Um, and he's using p- little kids who really don't know how to act, but it, it offers this real natural, weirdly natural thing. And um, on that note, in, in a way, uh, it's, it's interesting in that regard, in that Engel, clearly an influence on Truffaut here, and... You know, Truffaut admits that um, Antoine, our main character, is, this is his first movie role. Um, okay. The story okay. is that he saw a flyer for the audition on the street and walked in for it. And uh, unlike unlike the actors in The Little Fugitive, Antoine so clearly, naturally, a great cinema actor. Um, okay, which I want to get into, because there's a really kind of interesting thing about the fact that, like, these are children, and they're actually pretty decent yeah. acting. Uh, but yeah. first, we had to start with we forgot. Oh. How do you? What's your How general you... feelings about the film, Adam? Well, it's no Hudson Hawk, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I told what you I'm is... gonna say that every time. No, it's fine. What is I Hudson like it. Hawk? Um, no, I really liked this movie. Um, a lot of things that shoot for gritty. A lot of things marketed as gritty and raw today, and more realistic. Uh, aren't 
Um, they're, they're just the stylized rawness that still doesn't happen in reality, but at least it's not movie magic, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but this, this is really true to life. This, this could have been a documentary. Oh, from yeah. The way it and feels. it's, yeah, it's grittiness from the story rather than grittiness from the way it's shot. Yeah. Like, yeah. nobody went into, like, After Effects and applied a, the grittiness <laughs> filter to make it a gritty yes. film. It's like, it's just <laughs> exactly. gritty. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's very real. It's, yeah. It's very... Yeah, and how did you feel about it, Pat? Um, well, I will definitely say that so far in the five films we've watched, is definitely my favorite. And I will say that it's going in my top... Probably top ten films list at this point. Oh, there you go. There I did you go. not expect that because I usually... There's not a lot of foreign films in that list because I am again a, a uh, uncultured boob but Pat doesn't um, like to read I, I don't even know French, how to so. read which makes these subtitle films <laughs> really tough terrible. um but no I just I well I loved it I thought it was fantastic you not being able to read um yeah. one really great thing about this movie is you don't know how to read uh, is either? that oh. you don't need to no not really everything that happens so true to life and true to experience uh, and it's not not like in this general oh i know what's going on because all of this has happened to me thing i mean i had a pretty un- pretty comfortable upbringing um, yeah we both but, did uh, well except but, for the uh, time i spent in jail in france <laughs> oh yes that was that was bad but uh you shouldn't have been selling that heroin um, uh, anyway, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the school scenes, this, uh, there's just so much emotion in the way it's shot, the way it's delivered, um, but not in this comedic over emotive way like Amacord had. Um, it's just, it's very real and very true to life. And because of that, you don't necessarily even need to know what exactly is being said. Right. Well, and it's so um, easy to figure out characters' motivations just based on the situation that's been yeah. created for oh, them absolutely. and absolutely. their reactions to it. And, like, just their behavior is, yeah, just so human. And in There's that no regard, explanation is necessary. Yeah. Beyond, beyond the school scenes, where obviously it's a lecture, so there has to be lots of dialogue. Beyond the school scenes, there's not a lot of dialogue in this movie. But here's the interesting thing: is frankly, with the school scenes, if, I'm not sure that if I were a subtitler, I would have even bothered to translate the school scenes at all. Because frankly, like as far as Antoine and all the children are concerned, the man might as well be speaking another <laughs> language. Exactly. It's not like they're paying attention. He's anyway. just rambling. <laughs> I mean, like his yeah. the lectures are total meaninglessness to him and then I which okay totally gonna go derail but like when the father asks about asks Antoine what you know what did you study today and he says oh the hair and the father goes well the turtle in the hair and Antoine's like no just the yeah, hair yeah yeah he starts reminiscing about the tortoise and the hair because you know it's so meaningless to what it's going to be and the mother says something about you know you're never going to use science or math in, mm. in the future, anyway. Uh, but it's so meaningless to their existence, and it, sh- it shouldn't be, to be fair. Uh, they they ought to be paying attention, and, and they get a better life, you know. The mother the mother disregarding science is, is one of my least favorite things that happens in reality. Um, yeah, these people yeah. who are proud, people who are proud of the fact that they never actually use algebra in their normal life, even though their teacher told them that they would. Yeah, it's like, well, just because you don't doesn't mean you it wouldn't be yes, helpful. Exactly. F you, Mrs. Smith. I never, I never used algebra. Right, you said I'd right. use it every day. Um, but, but no. Um, but clearly, you know, if if his father was raised in the same sort of you know, school setting, it didn't stick with him. Well, but I the mean, weird is thing is, is that like the, a story that is very meaningful did stick with the father. And the father yeah. automatically assumed that that's what they were learning about was a meaningful story that tells a meaningful moral. But we listened to the entire story of the hair, and frankly, it seems to be rabbit-focused eroticism. Yes. I'm yes, not sure. Very, 
It's it's very clearly it's very clearly a love poem, and and as such, our our view of the rabbit uh, as 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 the oversexed animal um, plays into that. Yeah. Um, and and I love the kids' reactions just to that. Oh yeah, that's we so have. funny and so when, and again so true. Yeah. Yeah. So accurate. To the one yeah. the one kid pretending to make out. Yeah. Um, uh, has his arms wrapped around him. Yeah. Uh, doing the whole hand thing. Um, which really surprised me because this movie was made in 1959, and you know, as far as as far as I'm concerned, that visual uh, started with Kimmy Gibbler in, in uh, <laughs> apparently not Full House in 1991. I think her doing that. Um, no, it's it's you know, I, I I just didn't realize that people have been doing that for so long, and, and yeah, because why would I? Um, right. That's not like that's that's not like something that gets written down in the history books, and then. Alexander the Great pretending to make out with himself. <laughs> right, did the <laughs> yeah, like in the notes, like in the liner yes. notes of like whatever some great like historical bibliography. <laughs> yes. And then Alexander did this really awesome hand thing where he looked like he was making out, but it was just him. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting note. Uh, I was at work on Wednesday, and I watched this Tuesday night, and I walked into work on Wednesday. Crazy coincidence. I really is the only reason I mention it. Uh, ended up. Uh, doing the mini bar replenishment, which requires me, I work at a hotel, and that requires me to go to every room that was occupied. I walked into room, one room, and Showtime was on, and I didn't even realize we had Showtime, because we should have HBO. Uh, they switched for some reason, and no one knows why. Um, but Showtime was on on a movie called Joe the King, uh, which had Val Kilmer in it, so of course I was obsessed with it, because I'm in love with Val Kilmer. Um, and uh, so clearly clearly influenced by the 400 blows um and then i looked it up afterward to figure out what the title was um val kilmer plays the dad he's, he's much more abusive father i mean we get a little bit of abuse in the 400 blows just as like a punishment thing though because he well yeah uh, and Ant- we talk about antoine that says second. that his mom died antoine says that his mom died and his father his father slaps him yeah but it's uh, almost at that point the father's Almost not inappropriate. Like, I mean, you know, no, in modern no, America no. It would be, but the fact his that reaction I, is very understandable. Yeah, like, um, which I do want to get into the father and mother a bit as soon as you yeah. finish about Val Kilmer, because I know if I interrupt <laughs> you in Val Kilmer, you're probably going to kill me. No, no it, it's interesting though. In, in looking up information on this film, I, I learned two things. First off, it's directed by a guy named Frank Whaley, uh, who is an actor, a character actor who's perpetually just, hey, it's that guy. For so many people, he was in a wonderful movie called Career Opportunities uh, with Jennifer Connelly, in which they are both locked overnight in a Target store that is being robbed. Uh, early '90s comedy, great movie. Um, but really surprised that Frank Whaley made a movie that's so clearly evocative of the 400 Blows. Uh, but then Leonard Maltin, in his review of the movie, uh, referred to it as the 800 Blows, just because he, uh, he uh, felt that it was like the obviously inspired by the 400 Blows, but so much more so because it takes place in modern day America, uh, where it's a much more much more abusive environment uh, physically. I mean, there's a lot of emotional abuse on Antoine, right. but the physical abuse in in Joe the King, much more. Out there. Which unfortunately uh, gets so into just, the fact that people get confused about what the meaning of the title 400 Blows actually means, which is not actually yes, referring to punishment, yes. but referring to the actions of the boy rather than the actions of the parents yeah. and the adult yeah. figures. He's, he's, he's fighting reality, fighting, fighting the world, not, uh, not being beaten. Um, he's sowing his wild oats, exactly. raising hell. But anyway, uh, so it, it's just weird coincidence to me that I happen to see a movie, um, based on this the day after I watched this. Providence. <laughs> but anyway, yes. So, um, let's move away from Val okay. Kilmer. So I have a couple uh, things. I'll like... still I'll still be dreamy eyed for a little okay, bit. Okay, but that's fine. We'll, uh... There's a couple of things. First of all, you mentioned earlier the fact that the Antoine is such a natural film actor. And that was one of the things that really surprised me in the film is that I re- I mean you even have a note in here is that it's really pretty wonderful acting for children. I mean, yes. not, it, I mean, we all have a lot of evidence that children suck at acting. All you need to do is look at the, a certain set of prequels to a certain science fiction film, and you get all the information you need about child actors. Oh, come on. Jake Lloyd wasn't Oh, well, great. the yes, point is, never, is that, like, right. this kid's great. He's totally no, believable. Kid is absolutely great. His co-stars, and by co-star I mean specifically um, 
his Renee, friend, yeah, is a little less friends, believable. Yeah, seems yeah. a little more self conscious, but Anton just does a beautiful job. It's yeah. just so, yeah. and natural. he's still not, he's, he's still not Jake Lloyd bad. No, he's not oh, as bad as no, he could even, be. Yeah, the friend is uh, only, yeah. just is just okay compared to Anton's. The, whoever played, yes. I forget what was the name of the actor who played Anton. I forget. I can't remember any of the actors. Okay, names. well, the point is, is that <laughs> Anton's actor <laughs> was much was amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of great. Before we get much into anything else, cinematography. A lot of great, great scenes in this movie. Uh, just the opening, though. Really, you know, we've got this establishment of it as Paris, obviously. Uh, but the way they do that is just to like slowly spiral in. Yeah. I driving on, on the bicycle. streets, but the camera. <laughs> yeah, the camera constantly focused on the Eiffel Tower as we drive by it, and then we just zoom by it and out into the story. Um, yeah, no, no, yeah. So, the, well, this, unfortunately, with this film, like, there were, the whole film is just, is very beautiful. Like, yeah. And so it's really, for me at least, very hard to pinpoint specific moments that I think, oh, that was great cinematography, because the whole thing is. There's no oh, point yeah. where the camera Absolutely. takes you out of the film. Yeah. You just feel in it. You feel in this boy's world the whole time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No. Completely agree there. Um, and yeah, and, and in that regard, the whole lack of lack of dialogue. Um, like I said, this movie could be silent. It's not. But the, the last, the last uh, act, the entire last act, there's even less dialogue oh, than, yeah. than the like, first two-thirds of the movie. I think... And the last five minutes of the movie is completely silent. Yeah, and well, you don't I even mean, really... I mean, it's not... Yeah, I mean, there's background audio. Yeah. But, well, and the fact of the matter is is that, like, you don't notice it at all. The fact that the dialogue is yeah. gone. Like, now that you oh, mention absolutely. it, like, I'm like, oh, wait, you're right. They didn't talk. But, yeah. basically, once they get into the juvenile correction center, there's, like, five lines. Yeah. For the rest, that's the, um, the whole rest of the film has like five lines. The mom being basically, part of my French bitch. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um. The the friend, well, no, the friend doesn't talk because he can't get through. No, in. he just shrugs because he can't get. There's in. the statement about by the kid who was caught escaping, saying like, "I had five days that were the greatest five days ever." Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's um. Like the there's the conversation. The conversation with the uh, with the shrink. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, That's pretty yeah. long. Yeah, and that is that is long, but it's it's like it's it's all of the dialogue takes place in that, and you know that's just that's just kind of like background stuff, and it's not even necessarily needed because we already know who he is and what he is. Yeah, and we already time. know. We I mean, we don't know the exact details, but we already know why he's screwed yeah. up. Or yeah, actually, in yeah. my We've mind, he's not really life. that screwed up. I mean, in the end, we get no. into this, if, and you kind of, I found myself wondering, not to, like, jump ahead too far, but, you know, after the final scene, well, what happens to him? Because yeah, he doesn't seem broken. No. There doesn't seem to be any wrong with it, this kid, other than the fact that everybody's overreacting to childish behavior. Yeah. Well, um, in, in that regard... Uh... You know, if this is really autobiographical and this is really true to Truffaut's we know uh, what happens upbringing, to him. <laughs> uh, we know what happens to That's him. True. He becomes a movie director, and in you know, he was 27 when this came out. Yeah, which it blew my mind because I was thinking, I was doing yeah. the math in my head, and it's like this takes place in 50s, uh, or what well, takes place in what uh, what time? I forget. Um, early, uh, probably early 40s. Yeah, I would say right. Not necessarily. It might take place in '59, even and then, even like, the and then the year it's released. I yeah, I did the math in my head. I'm like, man, yeah. this guy's young. Yeah, he is so young. He I looked at I looked story. at when he was born, and he was 27 when this came out. And if it's true to his experience, you know, it, that's that's amazing. I'm 27. I've not done anything like this. It made me feel bad. Yeah, it's it makes true. me feel bad um, now. Now that you bring it up, thanks. Adam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you sad. Um, but yeah, just amazing director, amazing writer. Everything about this. Awesome. Yeah, well, I, this is um, a film that is going on a list of films that will probably get bought by me if I can ever find it. Yes. Yes. Well, if you need me to mail it to well, you. Well, yeah. Uh, who, uh, I don't want to get into that right now. But yeah. No, no it's, yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely on my list of films that, like, wow, everybody I meet, I 
who says anything yeah. about liking film, I have to be like, we'll, be, well, have you seen this? You should we'll watch it. We'll be talking about this. Today. We'll be talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, so I wanted to get into <laughs> the parents, okay? Because okay. there's a, an interesting thing that we talked about. You mentioned briefly the fact that the father slaps him after he says that his mother is dead. And how yeah. really in our minds that is not an overreaction to that thing. That w- to what no, he not really. Like, yeah, these days in modern America, slapping a kid is not appropriate, period. But he deserves to be punished. I mean, he did a thing that's terrible. He claimed that his mother's dead. But yes, no. until that point, a little bit after that, when he robs or steals the typewriter, what we don't realize is that the father and him have a pretty good relationship, as far as I'm concerned. The father has been, as far as I can tell, in what we see, a pretty good father figure. He's kind yeah. to him, and, and he, they joke around in the way that fathers and sons should, but the father yeah. is also serious with him when he does things that he shouldn't do, yeah. and doesn't seem to and overreact it's, it's, to things. But then, and the mother is terrible. The mother is the worst human, yeah. must got to be the worst mother ever. And yes. all this, this relationship, and then we find out, after we see all of this, that the person who is it's nice to him is not even his actual yeah. father. Not his actual father. Yeah. And the, yeah, no, and the only it's, it's, blood relationship or relation we see in this film to him is the one who treats him like garbage. Yeah. Like totally. a, a totally. slave who doesn't do what they're supposed to. Yeah. To to the point where I'm not even sure, you know, just because it's so vastly different from the way we've characterized him, at the toward the end when she's meeting him in the prison and he talks about, first of all, the kid, Antoine, writes the letter to his dad, not to his mom. Mm. He writes a letter to I his dad. I don't think dad. the dad ever got it. And... And yeah, and she says, she says, you know, it was foolish of you not to think that he'd show it to me, and he never wants to talk to you again. And you know, immediately segues into, and now the neighbors are talking, and there's all this rumor, and we never want to see you again. Yeah, um, well, and, just, and statements about and, how and don't he's bother, his don't bother sending and, another letter to him. And 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 my only thought the the entire time was like, that's she opened the letter. And yeah, dad never saw that it. Is, because that man is not a bad that man. Is, you can that see is not his how sympathy that man for his son, for his adopted son, even in the police station. Like he's looking for like work camp or some, but not like in a cruel way. He's looking for like somewhere to yeah. put his son that isn't where he is that now. That isn't prison. Yeah, <laughs> that isn't prison. And like you know, the Wikipedia and like some of the commentary on this discusses like the fact that like you know the father. Um, you know, kind of does this cruel thing to make him spend the night in jail, but I think I don't think that's the father's cruelty exactly. Like, I don't feel like the father yeah. says, like, you know, I want to put my son in jail. I feel like more it's like, I'm going to turn you in and then I'm going to help, get the help of the police and the judge to sort out what to do with you. To make yeah. your life, yeah, it's, because it's obviously like, school is not working for you. It's like one of those punishments where you're... Uh, Dad finds out the kid's smoking, so he makes him smoke an entire right, carton of cigarettes. Exactly. It's like this, it's 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 trying to be this scared straight thing, right? Not, not, and and it seems yeah. like it would work. And frankly, like the, you see at the end, the mother sort of cutting off the son's communication to his stepfather, but or adopted father. But really, in the yeah. end, you, I don't get the impression that the father at any point didn't want or wanted to cut off communication to the son. Like more like yeah. he wanted to find a place yeah. to put his son where he has some sort of chance of success. Because the father even is discussing with the police commissioner or whatever, this head police officer, that, like, you know, a work camp where he'll learn a trade sounds really great. (laughs) But then this kid finds himself in a juvie detention thing instead. And, like, I guess... For whatever... For whatever the promise is and the fact that it's near the ocean, um, which, which the mother does, you know, in one very caring moment... Request that it be the only caring moment she has. Oh yeah. Request request that that it be near the ocean, and and the the police commissioner says, uh, "What well, this isn't a vacation, and it's clearly not a vacation." Well, and the weird thing is, is that for, being near the ocean has no practical effect on their life there. It's yeah. not like they get to go to yeah. the ocean once in a while. Exactly, exactly. Um, but but one thing, you know, the the whole prison—it's not terrible no. the way we're viewed. 
And and I read I read on Wikipedia that that it was in part supposed to be commentary on that sort of juvenile detention, but it's not a hugely bad place, but it's still dehumanizing. Uh, if we watch the way it's shot, everything in the back, everyone he interacts with, save the one guy at lunch who yells at him and makes him sit in the corner, stand in the corner, to eat. Everyone who interacts is a disembodied hand or a disembodied voice. Mm-hmm, that's um, true. Yeah, you know, when he's in pri- uh, the first day, he's handed this cup of coffee through the door. Um, you know, he's handed his food through the door. Um, the shrink we never even see. She's just this voice asking questions. It's, you know, there's no humanity to it. And that's really, that's all the farther we go as far as this being a bad place. Obviously he wants to escape, but he wants to escape, he wanted to escape his life, period. Well, so and the not... weird thing is, is, yeah, it's a dehumanizing place, but at the end, like, I, you're watching it, and I found myself thinking, well, compared to what he was putting up with before, this is actually pretty it's nice. It's not that bad. I mean, like, yeah. there's one dude yelling at him for starting eating his bre- his meal early, but, like, he isn't, he, the slap was a bit much, but, like, yeah. I mean, otherwise, I mean, eating, starting eating before everybody else gets there is not something that should be accepted in, like, yeah. a, a organized school environment, and beyond that, like, you just sort of, everything else that he does, he plays sports, he goes to class, it's sort of like, yeah. wow, this is not compared to, like, the crap that was going on in his life. I mean, like, the teacher and the school life at his real school in Paris was much worse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, his teachers in that school life are much more reactive and terrible. So, I don't know. It's sort of, like, almost hard to see it as a commentary on on juvenile correction, but but more on a commentary on, like, just bad parenting and, like... Yeah, by no means is this a bad place. No. Or, I mean, it's not a good place. It's oh, not yeah, a great but... place. It's not a place. It's not a place that anyone would want to choose to be. But it's not. It's not like they're locking him in the dungeon at night, right? And it's <laughs> not like he's really seems to be suffering, other than just yeah. the, the natural yeah. suffering of wanting freedom that he can't have. Yeah, yeah. I thought it really interesting, and I, I really have no idea why this was in the movie. Um, but, but since we're talking about that end of the film, um, really interesting, the little girls who are always playing on the field when they go to play soccer and someone comes by and in puts them in their own little cage. Why? Uh, I mean, I assume, I assume the idea is that, you know, the authorities are afraid that these older boys will do something to the little girls. So they need to be kept away, uh, and separated. But why not, like, take them inside or I know, something? I know, and I was, like, really, like, found myself thinking, like, okay, this is a boys' school for juvenile delinquents. There's no yeah. other female there other than our disembodied, yeah. uh, disembodied uh, psychiatrist voice. <laughs> yes, the disembodied psychiatrist. So, like, I find myself wondering, like, I was like, are these delinquents? No, these have to be, like, the family members no. of the people who work there, which just makes their yeah, being locked exactly. in a cage just that more absurd. <laughs> ridiculous why not bring them inside yeah, that was that was that was one of the few the few disconnects i had with this movie i think was just why and and they never interact so there's really no reason for them even to be in the movie except to maybe try to humanize the the workers a little bit yeah but it doesn't but we could have done that differently and we've already gone out of our way to dehumanize them to just make them these disembodied things right and it's almost like it's there to machine. confuse you as to why these children are being locked in a cage maybe yeah maybe maybe it's purposely there just to be confusing but but yeah so it's great um <laughs> there's, there's a lot of wonderful things yeah well, like talking That's, about just random sort of wonderful things that are a little bit disconnected do you remember the jogging scene where they go out and about it's pretty early in the film yes i that was it was yes. very funny but it was a and everyone, everyone yeah, just and sort of the peels time they get off. to wherever they're like, there's two kids walking directly behind the teacher. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yes. I enjoyed that. No, oh, it was great. It was great. Fizz that in Paris. It's wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah. His first school was definitely, definitely terrible. Um, there's a lot of great moments of humor in that first school scene too. Like the little kid uh, taking his taking notes on the hair 
and he keeps messing up the the ink. His oh yeah, broke or yeah. Whatever. And, like by the time so he, he gets done, he tears like, out the sheet. He has goes, this look on his face he's with got... one sheet of paper left. He's like, ah, I give yes. up. Ah, oh, shoot. Yeah, <laughs> almost slapsticky there. Yeah. Really, um, there's a few moments of that yes, sort of slapstickiness a little bit. But it's 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 kids' humor. It's how kids yeah, are. Yeah, well, I mean that you could, and especially if yeah. you have a teacher who relentlessly makes you take notes. Oh yeah. And with a fountain oh, yeah. pen, like the chances are pretty high that you're going to find yourself in a situation like that. I suppose so. Yes. No, absolutely, absolutely. I really, I I liked as well. Um, Renee, his friend, when he stays with him, uh, it's very clear that. You know, Renee is is shown as like he's better off. He's rich. He's got this huge house, this huge room. I mean, Renee's room is bigger than Antoine's oh, apartment. substantially larger. <laughs> substantially. There's a horse in it, for uh, God's sake. There is, there is a horse in there. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but at the same time, his parents are like the exact same. Yeah, it's really... His father's rich, but he spends all his time... He spends all his time at the track, at the track just like just Well, like and Antoine's it's really dad. crazy. Uh, his mom... That, like, they're painting him as, like, so better adjusted, but, like... They're yeah. mentally speaking and si- and like emotionally development yeah. uh, emotional development speaking like in the exact same place. Yeah. They're both basically yeah. and he's not kids better. living alone. Yeah, they're kids living alone, and and like you said, they plan to run away together. I mean, they're looking for money to get out together. Well, well, and the weird thing is, is honestly, um, I would say that in a certain amount and a certain small way, Antoine is better off than Renee. Renee. Because Antoine's adopted father does care. Yeah, at least he has interaction. Like with, like, caring interaction. Like Renee's interaction is like, uh, are with his father are practically identical to uh, Antoine's interactions with his mother. It's like, oh, good evening. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah. See you later. Yes, exactly. Like, he 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 shows up and and well, Renee, you know, purposely turns the clock ahead to get rid of him because he wants to get food to Antoine. Um, Still, this guy hears the clock and thing, and it's, oh, it's already track. 9.30, I need yeah. to get going to the club. He's just he's just gotten back from the track, presumably, and now he's going to his social club um, at 9.30 at night, where presumably he'll be there right. the rest of the night, and he is there quite late until he walks in on them. Well, and then his reaction <laughs> when he walks in is just so... Like, I guess, you know, it's that kind of like the kids... what you would think of as, like, the cool parent, but in reality, he's just yeah. negligent. Subtract yeah, your cigar yeah, money from your is. allowance, yeah. and I take three cigars out of your allowance, and you drink this entire bottle of alcohol. But I won't mention it. And, and then I <laughs> see your friend's sneaker sticking out of the back of the bed. But I'm just gonna <laughs> ignore it because I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> we'll just ignore that because I don't want to put in the effort to deal yeah, with it. Right yeah, now. it's so like in reality, Antoine's fan, like not his family, because his mother is, as we said, a terrible person. Yeah, but his his family in general, the sum total, is more interested and engaged in him than his, than Renee's. But somehow Renee is better off. Yeah. Because he has money. Well, right. And, yeah, exactly. And basically because yeah. they decided to steal Antoine's father's typewriter and not somehow... And not just take the nest egg out Right. Of, yeah. uh, like, we could have totally ended up with a different... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 and that's 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 a weird way to go. It's almost you know Rene still he's the bad influence, and they're talking about running away together. But I think Renee's still covering his own. Oh yeah, Renee could have helped because he he, he could have yeah. said he doesn't something. want to take his parents' money because he's yeah rich. he um, doesn't want to ruin a good thing yeah sneak in like ten dollars yeah. out every so often or whatever. Speaking of the jail, or speaking of that sort of after the tiebreaker, I would like to point out that I do believe he was locked in, that Antoine was locked in jail with time traveling Jude Law. <laughs> it might the have been. Is it very well might have identical. been identical. It's possible that Jude Law is just a mortal. Yeah, I'm considering it. Changes um, his name once every so often. Has to fight other Highlanders once yeah. in a while. Because yes. that can be only one. <laughs> Maybe he's just been kept alive because uh, it's it's Jude Law clones being used. As, I don't know. As organ I dogs. saw that. I was like, it, what? It? Yeah. This means that either really Jude Law is like and, eighty years old, a clone, or an alien. Yeah. It's, it's true. Or it's time possible. traveler. I really. There's an interesting part in that scene. Uh, in in that in that 
time traveling Jude Law uh, sleep on his cot while Antoine kind of sleeps on the floor, but it's such a small hole oh, in cell yeah. that even Antoine, who can't be that right, tall, he's probably like uh, five foot like, something, has his neck like bent all out of shape because he can't sleep all the way across. But then the girls arrive, whatever. I guess they're arrested prostitutes or not, but they get put in the same holding cell as time traveling Jude Law. But they take Antoine and out. Antoine gets moved. That's weird. He gets. Yeah, he gets moved to just like this standing cell that looks like it looks like it's like a closet that you might hang your coat right, in. Like just a telephone to be booth. made out of the same mesh. Yeah, um, and he just he gets to stand. Yeah, because there. there's not even space uh, for him to like do anything else. Yeah. Yes. I think there might be. Yeah, a I think bench he does sit down, too, but like the point is, is that that's all yeah. he can do: is stand up or sit down. And it's like, why did you lock yes, the child exactly. away from the prostitute? Yes. It's really a weird, yeah, thing. And then, they, like, yes. ten minutes later, they yeah. all get dumped into the, the paddy wagon together. It's like, what yes. was the point of all that? So there was really, there was no, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it was weird. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's so, like Jude Law, time traveling Jude Law tangent. Yes, you, you, definitely, uh, you definitely got me out of there. Um, one, one, great, uh, one great visual scene I really loved, and... Amazed that uh, amazed that they did this in '59, and it actually worked out visually. Um, when Antoine is in the Total World, oh yeah, um, that's pretty impressive. And we're get, I mean, obviously, there's this visual metaphor of of life blurring around him and everything spinning out of control. Uh, but but the actual visuals of that visual metaphor. Because uh, we get uh, we get the shots of him moving around from above it, and it's clearly obviously. You know, it's 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 got to be that a camera's mounted oh, in that. Oh yeah, because I don't think this is. Spe- um, there's no special effect here. I don't think this is just somehow somebody found a really clever way to like mount it. a camera without getting so much shaking that it would like ruin the image. Yeah, yeah. I really I need to look into how they actually did that. I mean, the scenes where we're seeing Antoine could have been recreated outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the scenes from his point of With view, the spinning? Oh, where we're no. seeing yeah, the that crowd is not, spin, I don't think that's a special effect. I think that's real. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I re- I hope it's real. Well, it's, you can almost tell by the fact certainly. that like the central post in the middle is properly visible, yeah. and the outside is just a blurry mess. Like the camera yeah. can't keep yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. I, and you know, as as the metaphor of this, you know, the spinningness. What? And it's and, and, and this is a spinning he actually. Yeah, and he's enjoys, smiling which is at wonderful. this. He's basically yeah. smiling at this like metaphor the only time. of the only him time being his life being completely out of control. Yeah. He enjoys it. Yeah, it's the only time he's, oh, yeah. he's seen smiling. Really. Um, yeah, and they spend they spend the day out. That's when they skip school, and when he sees his mother. You know, kissing another Which man. I, I would, uh, yeah, like, I wonder, you know, that's such a weird scene, like, yeah. I mean, it's not weird, like, I mean, it establishes the mother is a yeah. liar. I liked the payoff on that, though, because um, later, when Dad comes in, and they're cooking dinner, and uh, he says, uh, your mother's not going to be here. And Antoine's immediate reaction is as, oh, has she left yeah, us? Yeah, right. But not not with any sort of concern or fear. No, Antoine does not. Like, it's like, like the father and son yeah. do have a sort of conversation about the, like, sort of the fact that his father points out, like, oh, your mother loves you. And you're like, we all know. No, she doesn't. Like, we're yeah. all, we yeah. all know, including, I think, the dad. Like, yeah. She yeah, doesn't. she doesn't love him. She doesn't care about his well-being. I mean, like, that's what you kind of... I feel like one of the notes I have here is that, like, I find it amazing that throughout the, film, the whole film, we don't seem to find anybody who is at all concerned about making him a better person or fixing any no. of the problems with him. Everybody's either there to punish no. him or it's... get him out of the way. Yeah. But Except for his dad. dad. His dad kinda. is concerned. Except for his dad. But his dad is, sort of seems to be adrift. Doesn't really know. His dad can't get his own life together. Yeah. And he's buying racing I lamps mom, and stuff. It, I, Fog lamps and stuff. I think his mom is pretty spot on about about dad, though. You know, he's kind of the shiftless. Uh, yeah. You know, he doesn't know what he's doing. He has no no. Yeah, the dad is. But, I mean, the dad is a good person. 
But in the end, like, yeah. the dad's so lost that there's nobody making a good effort to make Antoine into a respectable human being. Like, the, the teachers are not concerned with it. His mother's not concerned with it. You know what I mean? Like, there's nobody in this universe that yeah. cares other than his dad, and certainly nobody capable of making a positive change for Antoine. It's just depressing, yeah. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, and the only time his mom seems concerned about, uh, besides trying to get him uh, in the ocean, which doesn't make any sense because it's not like he's going to go to the go to the ocean anyway. Though he does, obviously, and that's that's great. Yeah. The final scene, but uh, the other time she she shows concern about his schoolwork when she, you know, tries to tries to you know I'm not much different than you. Speech while he's in bed and gives him the bath and then bribes him and says if your essays within your French essay is within the top you know five uh, five percent of the class I'll give you a thousand francs which is what yeah 10 who bucks. knows I'm gonna call it ten dollars yeah my yeah. mental math made it I give you a thousand to make it just easy yeah. to understand yes um, and I thought it I thought it really really great that the very next scene it's so indicative of what I believe the the stereotype I have of French film. The next scene, him preparing for his essay is smoking a cigarette and reading Balzac. Right. But I like I like that this little boy this boy who everybody says yeah. is a is an is a useless hunk of crap read that and took it that much to heart. Yeah. Because he's not he's preparing oh, yeah. but he's not preparing. He because like when you get into the next day of class, they're like, you know, the essay seems to, by the teacher seems to be randomly chosen based on the teacher's whims, right? So he's preparing yeah. because he's like, oh, I want to improve my writing, so I'm going to become well read. But like he just takes the message yeah. in that in that story to heart, and then thinks that yeah. like. And he, and he remembers it right. word to work. And like word when you word. think about it, this kid's amazing. Like when you really sit yeah. down and think about it, it's like, yeah, he plagiarized, which for his, someone his age should not be a removed from school offense. It should be a yeah. well, do it well, again. What, don't ever do it again. What it seems to me, picking up on there, I don't think I don't think the problem is that he plagiarized. Because uh, obviously, I mean, he, he quoted word for word the Balzac, but the, the essay was supposed to be about the Balzac. Um... And, you know, it talks about his grandfather dying. Um, I think the problem, what he's actually being accused of there, is physical plagiarization. Uh, that he had the Balzac Right, right. Right, yeah. It's a little bit vague as to so what So it's the not that he quoted it, because, yeah, what the teacher asks his... The teacher talks to Renee sitting beside him, and Renee says, well, he didn't have the book out. He, I mean, he didn't cheat. Yeah. And that's the problem. I think there's a slight... Slight translation problem in calling it plagiarism. Yeah, I got a little bit lost. As, I wasn't as as what sure because, like, yeah, yeah, like I was also confused because I was not aware that the the lesson was the essay was supposed to be on the Balzac. I just wasn't. I yeah, didn't, yeah, I'm not real clear on that either. But the point is, is the kid's actually obviously quite intelligent, and yeah, basically their yeah, reaction you, was you find something he can relate to, and, he and gets their it. reaction is to treat him like crap for doing a good job with it. One way or the yeah. other, even if he plagiarized it, it's clearly he only plagiarized the last... Even if it is plagiarism, he only plagiarized, like, four sentences. Yeah. Which, yeah. Would, if you and, consider and the rest of the article is fantastic, it's like, well, he did a great job. Yeah. They shouldn't have... They shouldn't right, have he shouldn't be going to the principal's yeah, office yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So... Yeah. And then he runs away, and then he goes to Yeah, and basically that's where it really all falls apart completely. Yeah. Um... Another note that I have that's kind of on the same topic, kind of about the fact that, like, nobody cares, I find it really interesting. I don't know what the time period of this film is, like, how, I mean, like, how long it's supposed to take, but it appears to all be taking place on a backdrop of Christmas, which I find is, I guess, maybe, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's that's a legitimate sim or autobiographical element, or if that is just to further em emphasize the fact that in this season, that is supposed to be, you know, yeah. nobody There's cares. no compassion. Yeah, nobody says, like, yeah, no oh, it's Christmas time. Are we going to treat this kid like this? 
they I mean you see like angels yeah. in the background and all this imagery of Christmas combined with just total lack of caring. And I guess I Absolutely. again I don't know if this is Absolutely. real, like this these events that he's portraying took place at this time, or if it's just to emphasize well, that even, element. Even if they did, the fact that he emphasizes it is is to say something like Right, that, and nobody certainly. even talks about the fact um, that it's Christmas. Ever. Yeah, Nobody's it's like just there. You know, no one mentions gifts. No one mentions the Christmas season at all. But it's yeah. obviously Christmas. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not. It's not overbearingly Christmas, which is a great a great choice on the director's but part. But yeah, it's totally it's noticeable. Subtle, like yeah, like it's not. Know. He doesn't hit you in the yeah. face with it. It's not like we're not talking like a na- National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation sort of thing. But like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. the backdrop is Christmas. A Christmas where there appears yeah. to be no Christmas. He's obviously not going to get any presents. He's there's no, their family's not making any preparations for Christmas that you could see. Yeah. And like, and this is not. I don't think. Hopefully, not be us being like absurdly American and like saying like, oh, other people don't celebrate Christmas the way you do. I don't think they care or notice that it's Christmas in the way they treat him, but also in their universe. This is a holiday that yeah. nobody in the film seems to even mind is coming or is there. Exactly. No, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a. There, it's the season of giving, but there's no. Yeah, there's, there's no. no giving, yeah, there's, there's no. no compassion. There's there, just, and a, I mean, there's no. And even the father, who we, as we've stated, seems to be the only, basically the only redeemable adult character in the entire film. Is, yeah, doesn't notice either. He's obsessed with his Michelin guide, yeah. and has totally missed the fact that yes. just it's Christmas. Or I mean, we again we don't know exactly what day Christmas is in this universe that we're watching, but you would expect at some point yeah. somebody would say Merry Christmas or Oh Christmas is coming or something. Something, yeah. but nobody does. Whatever. Yeah, just, just the windows just the, of the stores and everything tell us it's Christmas. And the yeah, it's just yeah. weird. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, I also think it's a, it's a little weird to me. Um, during the psychologist scene, uh, Antoine describes you know she asks why he returned the uh, typewriter, and I think he lies to her. Because uh, he says that he couldn't sell it, so he thought, you know, I don't want to keep this around. Um, and, and obviously, as the other kid says, stealing a typewriter is the worst idea. Worst idea because they're they're all yeah, serial. Yeah, no it's an, so, a crime you can't get away with. It was, yeah, but I think from actually watching it happen, it really feels like he has some sort of remorse. Obviously, it only happens because he can't sell it. Or because the guy right. tried to steal and he, it. And yeah, he obviously he does realize that he's never going to be able to sell it. But, yeah, he, he could have just yeah. chucked it. But at the same time, yeah, he could have gotten rid of it. But he takes it all the yeah. way back. And, you know, he's already determined he's, he's already run away. He's determined that he's never going home. But he takes he, he still takes his father's typewriter all the way back to right. his Right, well, and I think it also is a... Is a supposed to maybe be a statement about his father there's only one person that in the whole other than his friend Rene yeah. in this whole universe that Antoine cares about and it's his father absolutely and I think that yeah. remorse yeah. does he build doesn't... inside of him yeah it's remorseful that he's stolen from yeah. his dad the only person and that's who cares why about he him. wants to take it all the way back all the way back so his dad doesn't know he's yeah. stolen from him doesn't think about it and he you know nothing's nothing's happened and then you know by sheer coincidence he's well, and, I, and I love that putting it yeah back. totally like a totally unrelated sort of only vaguely really I love the character who catches him because the statements that character makes implies that somehow this character has finally decided to not like get drunk in the basement and actually decided to do his job <laughs> I'm gonna show them. Like, how many, you start wondering, like, how many, how much stuff has been stolen from this office? <laughs> no, absolutely. No, he's a great character. Like, how many, how many typewriters have walked out of this office, dude? 
And then you and then you're gonna call Every it on the, the one time oh. you do anything about it is the time when somebody's actually returning stolen property. Yes. Yes. No, it's great. It's great. So yeah, no. <laughs> No, the only breaking. other thing I want I that I have in my notes that's like really where I want to talk about is so at the very beginning where where it hits the fan for Antoine really sort of is when his the other kid in his class turns him in right like to his father and I yeah because there's no other reason he wouldn't have gotten away with it. I mean, other than the fact that he decided to tell him that his yeah. father, his mother's dead. That's a terrible excuse, but... Yeah. But the, the whole skipping school. The only reason his parents are at the right, school right. the next day aren't because they found out that he, you know, said his mom was dead. Until they, they don't get find there, out yeah. that until they're talking to him. Um, it's because he was missing, and the kid stopped by and said, said oh, he's yeah, skipped school and, yesterday. Mm, Just wanted to make all, sure... Yeah, all I can say, I, my note says specifically, that kid's an asshole. And, like, yeah, that they poke fun at him, but he, the thing is, is he also really seems to deserve it. Like, like... Yeah. Well, he's definitely, he's well, definitely a brown nose, for sure. even seems worse than that. Like, I mean, it's not even like he's trying to get along with the teacher. He's, like, actively malicious towards his fellow students. Yes. And no. I, 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 my other note is true. I wish he would get hit by a car. No, because he's he's hopping across the street. He skips. He does he does this terrible thing to his classmate, and then he's like skipping with joy afterwards across the street. And I'm like, man, one of these cars better hit this kid. Yes. No, I mean, and like, oh, yeah. I don't know. No. It's just one of those things where like, you you start to get the impression that probably this kid is what every adult in the story wants Anton to be. And like this kid's a oh, he always awful is. child. You know, that's 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 a character. That is that is a character that yeah. exists everywhere. It is it is the the kid every parent wants your kid to be because he's the one who's uh he's uh he positions himself as Yeah, the and then like because because and he's like this the good stuff child. about like where'd you get these glasses? And like, I bought them. It's like uh you Awful, like, cause I mean, like, they're like, did you pilch money from, or filch mom money from your parents? And like, no, this kid didn't. His parents just buy him this stuff. No. And his hair is so yeah. neat, and he wears a hood yeah. for no freaking reason. And just to hate this kid. Yes. And I, he does that. He, I love that they always call the teacher yeah, Mister Salad no, too. I don't even no, know the teacher's don't. real name. It's good that way though, cause again, like, the universe of that school that they create in the story is very. Is a little more abstract than the rest of the story. Like this is just the embodiment of bad school, instead of like probably yes. real characters. Whereas the rest of the film seems to be more like these are real people that he interacted with. Whereas like Professor Sourpuss is probably the best recollection he can have towards whatever his teacher was like. You know, and, yes. and stuff like that, and then like the English teacher, which is like all these sort of. They're the, they're the most absurd characters in the film. They're the closest thing to a, a caricature that we get. But having been on the yeah. other side of the teaching yeah. no. thing, I also kind of feel bad for Mr. Sourpuss. Because, like, no, these no, kids yeah, are also it, awful. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> like the kids are awful. I mean, if you've ever worked with kids for an extended period of time, it's really easy to slowly lose your grip on your sanity. No, I understand that. That's uh, why I stopped. And my you just sometimes want to just <laughs> yell at him. It's like, Ugh. you know, I'm doing this because yeah. you need to learn this stuff, not because I love to tell you about this stuff. And you know, so it's as a teacher, it's a little hard not to sympathize with him at certain points. So like, you know, you know, he's punishing them yeah. no, I, not directly in most situations, not for being for just misbehaving, and his punishments are not too awful except for when he suggests that we he always jumps to kicking kids out of school like on a hourly basis but yeah but it's but it's the it's the reactions of right but things teacher. like you know you, you, recess is a privilege not a right stay in here these are yeah. normal things they're not particularly cruel in any way yeah 
He, yeah, I don't exactly. feel that he's the teacher is excessively cruel. He's just not very good at his job. So yeah, yeah. certainly true. All right, one last thing okay. I want to talk about then um, the ending oh, we yeah. mentioned briefly. Uh, the last five minutes, they're playing soccer, and Antoine runs dives under the fence. He is chased, but he loses the guy chasing him. And we get we get the last five minutes with no dialogue uh, whatsoever. He's just running, he's running, and he makes it to the ocean, which we've already established he's never seen the ocean. The mother says that. Um, so this is his freedom. And we know, you know, from, from the other kid who escaped, and he spent five days on the lamb, we know... You know, Antoine's not going no, to be gone. No, he's going to get caught, especially since he ran to the ocean and he's just hanging out. He's going to get caught. Uh, yeah. And, but, and, and that very last shot, he turns straight at the camera, but it's still this sort of, oh, they're on to me, mm. sort of look. Um, or maybe, maybe not, oh, they're on to me, but making sure they're not. You know, he will be caught, but still, all he's wanted to do is Right, and, like, you get the impression from that scene that, like, he, this is... The only the second time of contentment we see ever. He achieved yeah. his goal. Yeah. It doesn't this matter is, how, if he gets caught. This is him achieving his goal. This is his right. This is his freedom. And and like the other kid says, that five days on the land is worth it. This it doesn't matter at this point if anyone right. is caught. He could be caught right. immediately he after five the filming. He needs this one moment at the beach. Yeah. He needs to see this ocean. And that's it. And it's 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 very satisfying to get him there. A little sad that we realize, obviously, he's oh, still yeah. going back to back to the juvie. But uh, but no, um, it's sad that he's know, going back to the juvie. But it's movie. kind of also nice that like he doesn't care. Like th- that's not relevant. Yeah, exactly. To him, he's got exactly. the one thing he's dreamed yeah. about. Exactly, exactly. He's gotten what he wanted, and now he can. Whatever they do to them. Right, he's, he's got, got that memory wants. and that... Yeah. So. It's a part of him now. Yeah. That's great. Um, fun fact, apparently Antoine returns in three other movies in a sort of Antoine uh, Interesting. series uh, that Truffaut makes. Um, so if you're ever interested in what happens to him later, you can go back. Same actor every time, from what I've read. Uh, I've not why seen not any use of those, a, so Why not use an actor that good. good again, you know? He's great. Yeah, exactly. He's a great actor. So, you know, even with this being his first role, uh, wonderful, wonderful actor. So, you know, great yeah, movie. Like wonderful I said, one movie. of my new favorites. Again, uh, yeah, definitely one of my new favorites as well. Uh, next week we're talking about Beauty and the, the Beast. 19... Uh, so stick around, come back. Mm-hmm. That is, yes, the 1946 uh, version directed by Jean Coteau. Uh, not any other adaptation, because there's oh, a lot of oh, them. Oh, man. Um, Good thing you told me that, because I think I yeah. rented the Disney one. <laughs> oh, no. It's okay. Um, we'll get into it, but Kato's version clearly uh, very influential on yeah, every definitely. other adaptation of the tale, including but the Disney that's one. that's for next week. 